Hello everyone, Ice Cool Tech here. Today we're going to be taking a look at how the iPhone 7 has been on iOS 13.5 developer beta 4. And before we get into the video, if you do happen to be new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all the latest news, announcements, and of course updates from Apple, as well as reviews, tutorials, and more from Ice Cool Tech. Every subscriber I get truly does mean a lot and it's very appreciated. Timestamps are also in the description if you'd like to use them. Make sure to watch until the end for an update in regards to June 22nd's WWDC 20 event. Anyways, let's get straight into the video iOS 13.5 was iOS 13.4.5, Beta 1 released a little over a month ago bringing much needed fixes as well as security patches and general improvements. Some of these fixes include a string of text that could crash any iPhone and a mail vulnerability where a user could gain remote control over the target user's inbox. Beta 2 released about two weeks after the first beta, bringing more fixes and improvements, and just a couple of weeks ago, Beta 3 released renaming iOS 13.4.5 to 13.5 and brought the first iteration of Apple and Google's COVID-19 Exposure Notification API. Let me know in the comments down below if you'll be using the COVID-19 Exposure Notification feature. iOS 13.5 Beta 4 brings more fixes and improvements, of course, as well as an updated COVID-19's Exposure Logging menu and settings. Performance while running iOS 13.5 Beta 4 on my iPhone 7 has been great. As I expected, there has been no noticeable increase or decrease in performance after updating the Beta 4. Everyday tasks such as opening apps, playing games, watching YouTube, and loading web pages all perform great. I've had no problems when it comes to RAM management either, however some iPhone 7 and 7 Plus owners are saying that they are experiencing frequent reloads. Animations are a different story. For the most part, animations such as opening and closing the notification and control centers, closing out apps with the multitasking screen, scrolling through apps and web pages, etc. all run very smoothly. However, I have started to notice an issue that comes and goes which is a missing unlock animation. It doesn't happen very much, but when it does, you'll notice it. There's also another issue that I've been running into. This issue is only present on my iPhone 7, and it's an issue I haven't seen since iOS 13.0 Beta 3. When swiping between pages in the home screen, it won't always recognize the input correctly and can think that you're trying to open an app. Battery life has been great so far on Beta 4. Just like on Beta 3, I haven't noticed any major drain. Now I should mention that my iPhone 7 is running off of a maximum battery capacity of 94% and has never had a restart. This means that my iPhone 7 is not being performance throttled to maintain battery life and prevent restarts. While on iOS 13.5 Beta 4, I have managed to pull off a full day with light usage and a full day with medium usage, however I noticed myself needing to charge the iPhone once or twice throughout the day with medium use. If you're a medium user, I'd recommend keeping a spare charger with you just in case you find yourself in need of it. If you are a heavy user, I'd strongly suggest using a battery case or keeping the charger with you as you will need to charge the iPhone multiple times throughout the day. As for standby time, I have noticed a drain about 3-5% to overnight. Just like the iPhone SE, this isn't horrible, it's not the greatest either. Now I haven't noticed any overheating on Beta 4 yet, but I'll certainly continue testing it out and I'll update you all if I find anything. Now, should you update? Well, if you're on an older version of iOS 13 and you're okay with installing betas or plan to install the iOS 14 beta on June 22nd anyway, then I'd say there's no reason not to. If you're on an older version of iOS 13 and would rather avoid betas, then I'd say wait about a week after the full release. Now, I say a week so it gives you time to see if any major bugs are reported. If you are on iOS 12 or earlier, I'd strongly suggest staying there as it is much more stable. Overall, iOS 13.5 Developer Beta 4 has been great on my iPhone 7. I have had no major issues while running the beta. Mostly everything works fine and this iPhone is getting closer to being ready for iOS 14. Now as soon as iOS 14 Beta 1 drops on June 22nd WWDC 20, I'll test it out and have a full review. Speaking of WWDC 20, I'd like to give an update on what I'll be doing. I won't be streaming WWDC this year, not because I don't want to however, I will be providing a developer beta profile for iOS 14 and watchOS 7 so you'll have access to it almost immediately. I'll send it out to all of you through a community post on June 22nd and you'll also be able to download it with a link in the description of all of my following videos. Now I do want to thank beta profiles for providing these betas to those of you who don't have a paid developer account. I'll link his Twitter and website in the pinned comment down below. Now, as always, if you have any questions, definitely make sure to leave a comment down below. Alright everyone, that's all I have for this video. If you did enjoy the video or find it helpful in any way, show me by leaving a like. And if you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every subscriber really does mean a lot, it's very appreciated. Don't forget to check out the iSchool Tech official Discord, link in the description down below as always. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter using the link in the description as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.